just just to follow through on the uh, um, questions that were done by the AP. Um, this is for my group that's on um, the Ed Puzzle, my class, Miss Baxter's class, Leslie's class, uh, Miss Steriot's class, and so on, anybody else watching. But what I want to do is do a couple of separation of variable problems, slowly but surely, and go through the nuances. I and if I do it the same way that all the teachers do it, great. If it's a little different, do what they're doing. But I'm just going to share. Let's say dy dx. Can you see that? dy dx dy dx. That's easier to see, I guess. Is equal to x plus one over uh, times y squared. Well, the easiest way to do it is if you want to think about this as dy dx, you can multiply both sides by dx, you can divide both sides by y squared, and now we're left with x plus 1 dx is equal to 1 over y squared dy. And we're going to, in, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So at this point, I'm going to take the integral of both sides. And what I usually do is, as simple as it is, I usually ask my students to rewrite this. Um, even though it's easy and even though you can do it in your head, it's amazing how many times Carol's mistakes are done. And now we're going to work it out. So this becomes y to the negative 1 over negative 1, which is equal to x squared over 2 plus x plus c. Technically, just so you know, we can add c to both sides. We can call this c1, this c2. We subtract c1 minus c2, and you're left with c3, which is still a constant. So instead of going through all of that, we just have one simple constant. Now I'm going to rewrite it without the negative sign. And we have negative 1 over negative exponent, I should say. 1 over y is equal to x squared over 2 plus x plus c. Let's say I gave you the point 0, f of 0 is equal to 1. Well, that becomes real easy. Negative 1 over 1, which is 0 plus 0 plus c, which c is equal to negative 1. c is equal to negative 1. And then we substitute in. Now, if we substitute in, we have negative 1 over y is equal to x squared over 2 plus x minus 1. Now, as simple as this is, what I like doing is if I ever have a fraction and I ever work like this, what I automatically do is I get a common denominator. I know there are a lot of ways you can do it, but I like doing it this way. x squared plus 2x minus 2, the whole thing over 2. And at this point in time, it becomes real easy because I can flip it. So you're left with negative y is equal to 2 over x squared plus 2x minus 2. Multiply both sides by negative 1. And y is equal to negative 2 over x squared plus 2x minus 2. And now we're finished. Let's do another one. OK, let's say I said dy. You can't see it. I'll work it there, dy, dx. And my advice to you is if you're going to redo these, please, before you do it, um, stop the video, try it on your own, and see what happens. The worst thing is you have something wrong. Equals 3 cube root of y plus 7. And now I'm going to end up using the same numbers, which is f of 0 is equal to 1. So if that's the case, can I say 1 over cube root of y plus 7 dy is equal to 3 dx? And once again, integral on both sides. 
and once again we're going to rewrite before we do anything and I would mark myself wrong on the test because it's the whole thing so of course parenthesis y plus 7 to the negative one-third power is equal to in dy is in equal to 3 dx now if we work this out we end up with y plus 7 to the two-thirds power over two-thirds which is equal to 3x plus c at this point before I do anything I'm going to rewrite it and I have y plus 7 to the two-thirds or should I say cube root squared and th two two-thirds in denominator same thing as 3 over 2 for those of you with the brain farts and a lot of people do have brain farts and I do admit it um, so what some of you might realize that y plus 7 to the 2 thirds power over 2 thirds isn't that the same thing as y plus 7 to the 2 thirds power over 1 over 2 thirds which is y plus 7 to the 2 thirds over 1 divided by 2 thirds and change division to multiplication multiplied by 3 over 2 and now we're left with where we are I know I go through this a lot in the classes when students ask why, and I know it's fairly obvious, but all of a sudden, sometimes when you're staring at an example, you forget things, and it happens, and it's okay, it's cool. So we're going to continue right on through, is equal to 3x plus 7, and now I think I said f of 0, um, plus c, I'm sorry. Um, at that point, f of 0 is equal to 1, I think I said. So if we work this out, we got 3 cube root of 8 squared over 2 is equal to 3x plus c, but x is 0. So that's whatever that is, c is equal to, let's see now, cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So C happens to be 6. So at that point in time, once C is 6, let's look what we have now. We have 3 over 2, uh, you can't read it again, there you go, 3 over 2 cube root of y plus 7 squared or is equal to 3x plus 6. Well, to make it easy for myself, I'm going to multiply both sides. So I got 3, or should I multiply both sides by 2 thirds? Two thirds. And if that's the case, we have um, x plus 2, um, 2x plus 4 is equal to y plus 7 to the 2 thirds power and raise both, power, both sides by 3 halves 3 halves so now we got y plus 7 is equal to square root of 2x plus 4 to the third now I want to point out a mistake that I do see often people do this and they'll write that but wait a second it's not 4 to the third power it's 2x plus 4 to the third power and your final answer is y is equal to square root of 2x plus 4 parentheses third power minus 7 okay let's do about two or three more of these and then I'm going to go into a slightly different situation um, okay can you guys still read this let's say I kept it simple and I turned around and I said th 3x huh. uh, still working okay I'm sorry about that 
So let's say all of a sudden I kept it simple. 3x plus 1 over y is equal to dy dx. Well, if that's the case, dy y is equal to 3x plus 1 dx and take the integral of both sides because I'm going to change it up in a second. y squared over 2 is equal to 3x squared over 2 plus x plus c. f of 0 is equal to 1. Keep it easy again. c is equal to um, 1 half. Well, let's work it out. y squared over 2 is equal to 3x squared over 2 plus x plus one half, and do you remember me saying, well, let's multiply both sides by two, because you can take care of the denominator right now. y squared is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. So y is equal to square root of 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. And by the way, if I would have said f of 0 is equal to negative 1, I would put a negative sign here, because the entire graph would be below the x-axis. Now for one example that I like playing with and I do in my class often. dy dx is equal to x over y plus 2. And this one starts playing. So let's look what I have. x dx is equal to y plus 2 dy. And then we're going to integrate both sides and look what we're left with. y squared over 2 plus 2y is equal to x squared over 2 plus c. And I mentioned again f of 0 is equal to 1. So this becomes c equals 1 half plus 2, which is um, 5 over 2 is equal to c. Okay, now to play y squared over 2 plus 2y is equal to x squared over 2 um, I'll just write as one thing plus 5 instead of 5 over 2 which makes it easy for me multiply both sides by 2 and if that's the case let's look what we're left with y squared plus 4y is equal x squared plus 5. But wait a second, I need y by itself, and here's where I like playing. If we look at this, we um, if I factor out a y, I can't do it. If I divide by y, I can't do it. But wait a second, what I like doing, and I never saw this on an AP exam, but anything's possible because it's possible. Completing the square. If I add 4 to this side, and if I add 4 to this side, look what I'm left with. y plus 2 squared is equal to x squared plus 9. Now, if I take the square root of this, I have y plus 2 is equal to square root of x squared plus 9. And therefore, y is equal to negative 2 plus square root of x squared plus 9. The only other type of example I see without using e, and I will get into that with the next grouping, would be if I gave you something like, where's the example I wrote it? There you go. Uh, you can't see it there. dy dx is equal to x plus 2 times 3 minus y. Or 2y or 3y, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is, well, you'll see in a second. But this one does get into logarithms also, so I'm throwing everything at once, I guess. If I turn around, I have 1 over 3 minus y dy is equal x plus 2 dx and then you take the integral of both sides the integral man this looks a little different so let's play for a second if I said u is equal to 3 minus y 
can I say du is equal to one negative one dy? So dy is equal to negative du. Okay. And if that's the case, I can say the integral negative one um whoops, this is dy du one over u du is equal to the integral of x plus 2 dx. Well, if that's the case, look what I have. Negative ln of u, but u happens to be 3 minus y, which is equal to x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. And at this point in time, I turned around and I said e. Well, let's get rid of this negative sign first. ln 3 minus y is equal to negative x squared over 2 minus 2x. I don't have to say minus c because it's still a constant. So I'm just going to write plus c. And the only reason I'm going through this in baby steps is because a lot of people forget the easy stuff. So if I rewrite it without natural logs, because don't forget ln of ln is the same thing as log with a base of e. Some people, my teachers might turn around and say, just raise e to both sides. You'll end up with the same results. You do. So let's look what I have. 3 minus y is equal to e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 2x plus c. Now, if I remember my rules of multiplication of x to the m, don't forget x to the m, x to the n is equal to x m times x n. So if I rewrite that in my own way, can I say 3 minus y is equal to e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 2x times e to the c? And isn't this piece now going to be a constant? And if it is, let's call it k. So I said k, e, and f negative x squared over 2 minus 2x is equal to 3 minus y. Well, let's continue with the example. And if that's the case, and I said f of 0 is equal to 1, so now I have 3 minus 1 is equal k e e to the 0 power. And anything to 0 power is 1, so k is equal to 2. Now to rewrite it again. 3 minus y is equal to 2 e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 2x. Subtract 3 on both sides. Negative y is equal to negative 3 plus 2e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 2x. And multiply both sides by negative 1. So y is equal to 3 minus 2e negative x squared over 2 minus 2x. Can you do a lot of this in your head? Yes, you can. But those of you who know me know I want baby pieces. I want you to write this line and this line and this line. But it's amazing how many people make careless, stupid, sloppy algebra or arithmetic or even copying mistakes along the way. And that's what I'm trying to break. I'll catch you later. Bye.